Uh, welcome back class. So we were learning about the uh, transformer and in the last lecture we have learned that uh, we can actually compute the turn ratio of the transformer by taking the ratio of the number of turns of primary or number of turns of secondary for primary voltage divided by the secondary voltage or secondary current divided by the primary current and then we learn about the impedance transfer using transformer and we solve the practical example. So now we are actually moving towards the inner theory of the operation of the real single phase transformer. So basically we are going to learn that how we are actually derive these formulas by analyzing the inner operating theory of a single phase transformer. So at the end our final target is basically how these formulas were derived. That is the focus of uh, the first part of today, uh, this uh, video lecture. So let's have a look. So we know that uh, basically uh, inside a transformer we have a core and due to the primary current the flux is actually generated and that flux actually the rate of change of that flux basically induces the voltage in the secondary side of the transformer. So if you talk about an actual transformer so basically uh, we have two kind of fluxes so we have uh, like phi m which is actually the mutual flux okay between the primary and the secondary side so basically when the current flows we know that uh, the, the rate of change of uh, the changing current the ac current will induce flux so basically uh, there will be a flux which is actually inside of the core okay and there will be some flux which is actually outside of the core that flux we call that uh, as leakage flux okay that flux is actually called as a leakage flux okay so there will be leakage flux at the primary side okay which we can represent as uh, phi pl primary side leakage flux and there will be a leakage flux at the secondary side now basically uh, as we are having the leakage fluxes here okay so the whole flux which is being generated it is not basically coupling the input voltage to the output okay basically these fluxes will escape the core okay and uh, they will pass only through the windings of the core so in this phase, basically in the reduced voltage, we know that basically this is the rate of change of the flux, okay? And if we talk, the head lambda is basically representing the flux linkage, okay? Lambda is basically representing the what is the flux linkage between the primary and the secondary side, okay? And the total flux, okay, which is being actually generated is the sum of the flux which is being generated through each coil, okay, each turn. That is basically, uh, for example, phi 1 is the flux generated through the first turn, phi 2 will be the flux generated through the second turn. So basically, uh, it could be like each turn generating a continuous flux, or it could be different, it will depend on the spacing of the turn. So, for example, if they are uh, the spacing is larger or stronger, okay, so the capacity of the generating flux will be uh, different, okay. And uh, this is basically the flux of each individual coil and if we make the summation of the flux which is generated by all coils, it will become actually uh, lambda, okay. And uh, if we talk about the total flux, flux linkage, and if we have n number of turns, so we can actually, this can also represent it as n, okay, if they are continuously generating the same flux, okay, n times of the flux. So, because uh, we are having the uh, leakage of the flux okay so it will affect our actual transfer of the uh, power okay so if we uh, if we want to calculate so as I said earlier this is the flux linkage which is n times of the flux and if we want to calculate what is the average flux uh, generated by each turn so we can calculate that average flux by dividing the flux linkage or total flux with the number of turns okay and Faraday's law we know that we can write like this so in this uh, Faraday's loss, if we want to calculate that what is the generated flux, so we can write that uh, this as 
it will be 1 over n okay of the induced voltage okay rate of change of flux and if you want to calculate flux so 1 over n integration of the induced voltage okay so that will be actually the flux so if we are uh, uh, talking about the primary side okay when the voltage is applied to the primary side so we can write the average flux as the 1 over np primary side number of turns with the integration of the primary side voltage okay and similarly on the same concept we can write the secondary side uh, flux and the total flux which is actually being generated it is the summation of the uh, mutual flux okay between the coils plus the leakage flux right at the primary side like if we talk about the primary side and if we talk about the total flux at the secondary side again that will be mutual flux plus the leakage flux at the secondary side okay so that is our uh, total flux now uh, if we talk about the faraday's laws for the primary side okay so the primary side okay we can write that the primary side uh, voltage basically is equal to the rate of change of the primary side flux okay divide multiply with the number of turns at the primary side right and uh, i have just mentioned that basically total flux at is what mutual flux plus the leakage flux okay so if i put just my formula here so it will basically become mutual flux plus the leakage flux right for np times uh, we have rate of change of mutual flux plus rate of change of leakage flux right that's what we are having here so basically what we can uh, write here that basically vp there they will be an induced voltage due to the mutual flux okay we can write that as induced voltage uh, which is uh, produced due to the mutual flux primary side plus the induced voltage due to the leakage flux okay lp okay like this formula basically is equal to the induced voltage so induced voltage due to the primary coil and the induced voltage due to the leakage flux similarly we can write the same formula so this is the form that formula similarly we can write the same formula for the secondary also okay and uh, if we talk about uh, the primary voltage due to the mutual flux only that will be this one and if we talk about secondary flux due to the uh, mutual flux only that will be uh, this one right and uh, let me write that so basically due to the mutual flux primary side it will be this one okay primary voltage due to the mutual flux it will be this one and secondary voltage due to the mutual flux it will be this one right and if we take the ratio of these two primary and secondary so what we can find here np over ns rate of change of mutual flux here and rate of change of mutual flux here. so these are cancelled so basically what is this primary voltage divided by the secondary voltage number of turns of primary number of turns of secondary which is actually turn ratio so this is the basic formula which we can actually derive from uh, this thing here and uh, we know that ideally if we talk about actual uh, flux generation so basically we know that the flux uh, which is being uh, the generated due to the mutual interaction or flux this flux is basically much 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 greater than the leakage flux okay so much much greater than mean so basically this formula can be simplified as we can place this voltage zero because this is, will be very small this will be very small so basically ep can be replaced with the vp here primary voltage over secondary voltage which, which was basically our original formula primary voltage divided by secondary voltage is equal to the number of turns of primary divided by number of turns of secondary so this is just the way how we can actually uh, derive this turn ratio formula in terms of the voltage now let's have a look in terms of the current so before going to the details of the uh, derivation due to the current okay we will look at uh, we will look at one thing okay which is actually magnetization current so 
basically when AC power is connected to the transformer, the current flows even when secondary is open circuit. Okay, so if you just look at the basic uh, circuit of the transformer, so we have primary side, we have secondary side. So if you are supplying power here or voltage here, so the current will start flowing, right? Okay, like even this is open circuit or short circuit, it doesn't matter. Here the current will start flowing. Okay, because this is, uh, they don't have direct connection. This is a mutual connection between them. Okay, and when this current is flowing, so basically that current is actually producing the flux. Okay, that uh, current is actually producing the flux in the core of the transformer. Okay, so this current which is actually producing the flux is actually known as excitation current. This current is actually known as the excitation current. Okay, and the excitation current we can actually divide them into two parts. Okay, it have two parts. So excitation current, one is the magnetization current, and to one part is the uh, losses current. Okay, or hysteresis and eddy current losses. Okay, we know that we will have the, uh, inside the core we will have the hysteresis and eddy current losses. So basically, the current can be divided into two parts. So one is the magnetization. Current. So magnetization current is basically the current which is required to produce flux in the transformer core. So inside the core of the transformer, the current which is actually producing the flux is called magnetization current. Okay. And uh, we have learned earlier on that uh, when uh, we actually apply the magnetomotive force, okay, for the current, okay, we get the flux or the uh, mag uh, magnetic flux density. Okay. And uh, we learned that about basically it follows a hysteresis law, okay. And then we will have the hysteresis uh, losses here, okay. And we learned very very well that, for example, if we know the magnetomotive force, we can calculate the flux or the magnetic flux density by from the graph also, okay. So the main thing which we have learned here that uh, the excitation current have two components: magnetization and the eddy current at the hysteresis losses. Now let's have a look. And also, uh, if you remember earlier on, okay, we derived this formula that uh, let's uh, ignore the leakage flux. We know that the average flux in the core can be representing using this formula. Okay, earlier on we have just derived this formula from the uh, Faraday's law. Okay, so basically flux is the integral of the primary primary side voltage divided by the number of turns. Okay, let's say if the primary side voltage is this cosine, V m cosine of omega t. So if we integrate, if we put this thing here, and if we integrate uh, cosine, cosine will become sine, okay? And Vm is a constant coming here. So it means if you are supplying this uh, voltage, primary voltage, let's say this is a cosine signal, okay? Primary voltage, cosine signal, this dotted signal, okay? This is a cosine signal. Then uh, due to this, a flux will be actually produced, okay? And that flux will actually have a sine signal, okay? Like we can see here. Okay, so now basically when you, we supply this primary voltage, okay, we are getting a flux. The flux is, uh, what is uh, the flux? Flux have a sine signal. So if this is a primary voltage, so due to this primary voltage, we are getting this flux, which is actually sine. Okay, so basically there is a 90 degree phase difference between the primary voltage and the generated flux. And also we know that basically this flux, which is actually being induced, okay it has a relationship uh, with the hysteresis right the ferromagnetic uh, the magnetomotive force and the flux okay so uh, like when we are getting maximum flux here so we are getting maximum uh, like in the hysteresis also okay and then basically uh, we uh, this flux is basically being produced due to the magnetization current okay so we can relate the magnetization current here also okay so like when we have maximum flux, so maximum flux is basically related to the maximum value of the magnetization current. And when we have minimum flux, minimum flux is related to the minimum value of the magnetization current. Or in other words, what we can say that as your flux is basically uh, lagging, okay, the applied voltage by 90 degree, right? Flux is lagging Vp by 90 degree. Right? Or what we can say that basically the magnetization current is lagging the Vp by 90 degree. If for example this is Vp, then this is our flux or 
magnetization current okay this is lagging by 90 degree if we call about the ideal case 90 degree will be coming here so basically magnetization current is lagging the voltage okay so if you guys remember this is a question that which uh, lumped component case uh, this scenario represents that the when current lags the voltage okay i will ask about this in the live session okay why basically when we uh, talk about the transformer equivalent model we are going to use this information okay so here uh, we can actually uh, write uh, this very basic formula okay so we know that basically the uh, net uh, magnetomotive force is basically n time i okay this is the magnetomotive force so for a right like uh, if we talk about that the our core uh, is unsaturated okay so basically the net magnetomotive force should be nearly zero so primary side magnetomotive force should be equal to the secondary side magnetomotive force so their difference should be zero and if we take the ratio of the uh, like uh, ns over np here that will be equal to ip over is okay which is basically our original formula okay that we can calculate the ratio by taking the ratio of the primary side voltage divided by the secondary side voltage oh, sorry number of turns primary side voltage secondary side voltage or secondary side current or primary side voltage okay so this is the formula which we actually derived from that thing then uh, we will talk about uh, the equivalent circuit okay so we will see this about the development of the equivalent circuit for transformer in the uh, live session thank you very much for your time here.